The US central bank, also known as the Fed, has stimulated the economy in the realm of 1.1 trillion US dollars since March of 2023. This is likely one of the key contributors to the strong economy we saw in 2023, a pretty miraculous recovery from 2022 when all of us were expecting a recession. Now to help visualize how much 1.1 trillion US dollars is, you take the largest company in the world, Apple, and you almost almost three times their yearly revenue. And that amount of stimulus is also the same amount that came from the central bank back in 2008 to help the US economy get out of the GFC financial crash. And therefore I think it's worth spending a bit of time trying to see where that amount of stimulus is going for 2024 with some brand new updates that have come out in the last few weeks. Firstly, let's just get through what exactly the Fed does so we can get a good understanding of all the different ways a central bank in modern day can stimulate the economy. The central bank controls what we call the risk-free rate. It's technically the amount of interest you would pay if you did one day loans every single day for a year to a 100% trustworthy source. So in other words, you go from this 100% safe loan rate and that's when you start adding on your interest rate due to risks. So for example, at the moment, the risk-free rate is at 5.5% and mortgage rates are sitting at around 6.6% and a couple months ago, they were about 8%. Those few extra points of interest rate you'd pay for your mortgage are all to do with your personal risk of not paying back your mortgage to whoever lent you that money, usually a commercial bank. So the US central bank has almost ultimate control over lending rates and usually when they raise interest rates just like they've done over the last really year and a half, then that usually means less loans are made throughout the economy. And we've clearly seen a slowdown in the amount of loans made in the US economy really since 2021. So those higher interest rates have had an effect. However, they're not turning us into negative territory yet. We still have made $200 billion worth of new loans since March of 2023. So you could say the Fed has done its best to try and control the amount of inflation and spending in the economy by raising interest rates. However, it's got three other jobs that it's been doing that's kind of counteracting that hard work it's been trying to do. Now, all the way since the beginning of the central bank in the US back in 1913, they've had some money on a balance sheet and that is used to keep track of any money they've had to print brand new to help run the economy. But this all changed in 2008 with the GFC when they started printing trillions of dollars to help stimulate the economy and basically buy up troubled assets. This was known as quantitative easing. So why would a central bank buy up troubled assets? Well, they only buy up a few select types of assets known as treasury securities and mortgage-backed securities. But if you think of the safest type of loan E or the person obtaining loans in the entire world, most economists would agree it's actually the United States government. So why would the central bank buy up US debt during a crisis and a lot of it, trillions of dollars worth? The government pays the same amount of interest no matter who owns that bond and no matter how much was paid for it in the last transaction. If you pay more and more money for that bond, the interest rate you would get for holding that bond actually goes down. And because the US government is seen as the safest type of borrower, they're paying lower interest, it actually lowers the interest rate for all types of loans in the US economy. And the Fed does this in order to try and spur banks to lend money to other people. People go out and spend money because all of a sudden it's way cheaper to borrow and that money spending cycle reigniting is really what it means to get out of recession but with almost everything in life there is always an opposite and in this case we go from quantitative easing that was spending to help the economy we go to quantitative tightening and the design of that is to actually slow down spending in the economy and try and drive up interest rates and since March of 2023 we've burnt about 700 billion dollars off the US central bank's balance sheet. In other words, we've deleted 700 billion US dollars from existence. The second most important facility is known as the reverse repurchasement agreement facility. In other words, it kind of does the opposite to what the usual central bank balance sheet does. And very simply put, this is a savings account that financial institutions in the US can access to put 
any excess funds they might have. With all the money printing that happened in 2020 with the pandemic and 2021, we printed about four and a half trillion US dollars worth of money and we effectively printed two and a half trillion dollars too much. There was just no productive place for it in the economy and a lot of money market funds, banks made use of this facility, but all of a sudden the interest rates that they were getting paid are not looking as attractive as other types of investments. And we've seen the balance of this facility drop down from two and a half trillion US dollars now to only 600 billion US dollars. It's really that banking crisis that started with the Silicon Valley Bank, First Republic Bank in March of 2023, which really switched the Fed's stance from trying to delete money off its balance sheet to all of a sudden stimulating by 1.6 trillion US dollars. And we've got one last final funding facility by the central bank and that's it. There's no other ones out there. You know all of them now. And that is the bank term lending program, which was an offer by by the central bank of the US to lend money to troubled banks in the United States under a very specific circumstance. These other banks could only access a loan when they had financial assets, specifically mortgage-backed securities, and once again, treasury securities that have lost value. The Fed offered these other banks loans to basically make up for all of their losses in these assets. So if they had lost 20% in all their treasury securities, they'll get made loans equivalent to those losses. And why did I say 20%? Well, if I have a look here at a price chart of an ETF that mimics the price performance in this is seven to 10 year treasury bonds in the US, then you can see we've had about a 25% drop from really the start of 2022 to the lows of 2023. Three. Funnily enough, we've stabilized since we've had about $1.1 trillion of stimulus by the central bank. And a lot of that money would have flowed to these types of financial assets, creating a bit of a floor under their prices. We've now got 160 billion US dollars worth of loans in circulation using this program, but that's recently skyrocketed from around $110 billion up to that 160. You might not be very surprised to learn that banks are now rorting this system, trying to make profit off of this program that was mainly just set up to save troubled banks to save people's deposits. The interest rate being paid to access this loan has fluctuated all the way from 5.5% when it was first set up. Now it's down to only 4.8%. But at the moment, it's quite easy for banks to make profit at about 5.5% or just above that. So they're pocketing an almost 1% profit margin off of accessing this program. And this program was dated to end on the 11th of March, 2024. And a lot of people are now suggesting that because it's getting taken advantage of, it's not going to get extended past that date. Summarizing these money flows since March of 2023 till today, day, we've had $1.1 trillion worth of stimulus. However, a lot of these programs are going to come to an end by around March of 2024. So that only lasted one year. That bank term funding program is going to have $160 billion drained from it. That's a negative $160 billion worth of stimulus. We also have the reverse repo facility only have $600 billion worth of stimulus left. If they keep draining at that current rate, that should end by about March. And then we're left with about $75 billion on average getting deleted from the central bank's balance sheet every month. By March of 2024, we're expecting to go from $100 billion worth of money creation, stimulus every month, to 75 billion US dollars deleted from existence. And we've never experienced that in the history of mankind. So to try and figure out what exactly is going to happen is almost anyone's guess. But when you're deleting money from existence, it's probably not great for asset prices of almost any kind. There is one saving grace that should be hitting the system by funnily enough about March of 2024, and that is interest rates getting cut in the United States. We're expecting to move from 5.5% interest rates now to a low of 4.25 by the end of this year. And the hope is that's going to spur commercial banks to lend more to everyday people, and that's going to make up for that money burning. However, throughout history, usually they only lower interest rates during recession, but if we offer 
often look at recessions as highlighted by these gray zones on this chart, you can see that the amount of loans made in the economy usually is stable, or even slightly goes down. And at those time points, interest rate cuts often occurred. So if we do manage to go into recession, it wipes out that idea of that positive about cutting interest rates. All right, guys, if you liked today's video, then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel because I will be giving you the most up-to-date data as soon as it comes out. I also want to thank the current member of the channel here, Brutalist Empire. That only costs one US dollar a month and it helps keep the channel going. All right, guys, thanks for your time today. See you next time. Bye.